talking about Ava, she might as well be in the part two to finish the story. So Yeah, we go to the park. Yeah, we're planning to go to the park after this. And then I have to edit this and get this up on uploaded up onto YouTube for you guys. Um, because I said I would. So anyways, where we were were induction and I was in active labor for 24 hours i tried to have a vaginal birth but ava would not come out she is a stubborn butt i only got to four centimeters dilation and then my team decided that it was medically necessary in an emergency for me to have a cesarean so i had an emergency c-section um, at 8 16 p.m august 5th and i delivered her she came out exactly at 8 16 yeah, so it was probably about like 6.37 they mm. were getting us prepared to be wheeled into the OR. I remember being petrified, nervous. Um, I didn't want to go to sleep because I felt like I wouldn't wake back up. I did have an epidural and then I had a shot of Dilaudid once I got into it. And so I didn't feel anything until they actually pushed everything back into me. Then I felt all of that and I just kept remember telling the nurse, please don't let them put me to sleep because I'm afraid I won't wake back up. So it took probably like, I don't know, maybe five to 15 minutes for them to get her out. They lift her up over the curtain. They're like, here's your baby. She cries. They wheel her away because her lung was collapsing. She was born so early she didn't have surfactant in her lungs. So she basically had to be rushed to the NICU and she was put on oxygen. I didn't hold this little munchkin until she was four days old. Usually, And I will insert pictures so you guys can see all of that in this video. Um, she could not be held because she was so uh, early and her lungs were early. I didn't have time. They didn't give me steroids to mature her lungs. Um, baby because of everything, baby, the way everything happened so fast. Child. It was just like, save us, save her, save me. So like everything kind of just like went really quickly. And because of that, she had to be on oxygen the first two months of her life. And she was in the NICU the first two weeks of her life. I remember by like day two, I was starting to like get really upset with the, the team because I felt like... No one was telling me what was going on with my baby. Like, why couldn't I hold her? And I remember I just, like, broke down crying in the room to the director of the NICU and Jonathan um, being behind me and just, like, rubbing my back because I just, like, lost it. I'm like, why can't I hold my baby? What's going on? So finally, I'll insert those pictures. Day four, I got to hold this munchkin. Day five, daddy got to hold her and she opened her eyes for the first time ever and they stared at each other and we have a picture of that so i will insert that because that was such a cute moment i knew right then and there they were going to be super close to each other um so yeah it was just like a really traumatic experience to go through um luckily she was discharged in two weeks she was four pounds five ounces and she was born august 5th 2015 at 8 16 p.m in parker colorado and now she's a bouncing perfect almost four year old and she has no health issues thank goodness um, i'm getting better with my blood pressure thanks to the 30 days made in celery juice um challenge mm -hmm. that i did with janice bossy mm -hmm. i'm now down to 20 milligrams of bp meds because i still have hypertension after having her um i had postpartum preeclampsia and i didn't really cure with delivery like most women do so we're working on those health issues, but that's pretty much my birth story with Ava. Um, it was a very traumatic pregnancy, and I remember grieving my pregnancy when they first took her out. Um, that first 24 hours, I cried in my sleep, the nurses said, because I just I felt like such a failure as a mother. And I got through this video without crying, which is great, because I really didn't want to mess up my makeup. But I do cry in that other video if you guys want to see a more emotional um side of that story because it was so fresh for me at that point now i'm you know i've accepted it and kind of it just was my story and hopefully it touches other people lets other people that are going through pre preeclampsia know that they're not alone and there's hope after that like you know that you can heal your body and become better so that's what i'm doing and we're working on a plan to get me off of my bp meds so hopefully by the end of this year you guys will get that announcement that i am officially bp med free and we are trying to have baby number two so we'll see how that goes but thanks for watching we'll see you again you want to say say thanks guys thumbs up I sure